Y'all got a scripture? Oh, yeah, like Acts, Acts 28. Okay, thank you, Doc. Was that Benjamin or was it Ty? No, that was Benjamin. Okay, Benjamin, I'm so sorry. <laughs> good, out, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to another lecture given by the Douglasville class. This is School and Not a Church, and these are we affiliated with any religious organization. <laughs> this school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh I Elohim and his eternal purpose operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founders, Dr. Henry Clifford Kelly in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain, fo certain other foreign countries. The Douglasville branch was established in 2014. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to school officials. The president is Dr. Jamie O'Dyer and the vice president is Dr. Dotson Wallace. In this school, we use the true, correct, original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that the Creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part, your part in the good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah, impossible renderings of our heavenly father and his son's name. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on our charts as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of the charts to show you that everything on the charts are within the cloud. In like manner, Everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being. That is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time you walked the earth plane? A further understanding of his name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern and vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court that goes around about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the threefold structure, and function of the tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. 
Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, so-called law of nature and the power of lady and man. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons and children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby men can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. At this time, we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Benjamin Williams. Then we'll have our scripture lesson read, Acts the 28th chapter by Dr. Uh, Carol Dye. May we have our prayer. Good evening, everyone. Let us take a moment to bow our hearts and minds and give reverence unto Yahweh. Yahweh, we thank thee this day that you have risen us from the dead along with your son and you put your spirit in us. Now we have our understanding. We ask that you increase that understanding so we can understand the scriptures more thoroughly. We ask that we keep this teaching the same as the founder have given it unto us, that we don't be led astray with anything that be before us. And we, we just ask that you overcome the evil in this situation with the, that Satan and his angel. And we just ask that we be protected and we want to give you all praise, honor, and glory and thanks. And through your dear son, Yahshua Messiah, and let the assembly say, hallelujah. Uh, good evening, class. Our scripture reading will be Acts, the 25th, excuse me, 28th chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. Revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association. Acts, the 28th chapter, begins on page 199. And when they were escaped, then they learned that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Saul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the natives saw the venomous bees hang, on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom thou, excuse me, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. How be it they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, they saw no harm come to him. They changed their minds and said that he was a deity. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received them and lodged them three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, of whom Saul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. 
So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laid it us with such things as were necessary. And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Polis. And the landing and landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from thence we fetched a compass and came to Hygium. And after one day the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Patilia, where we found brother and were desired to tarry with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Athlete Forum and the three taverns, whom when Saul saw, he thanked Yahweh and took courage. And when they came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Saul was permitted to dwell by himself with a soldier guarding him. And it came to pass that after three days, Saul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of, for this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, we neither receive letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee, but we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of Yahweh, persuading them concerning Yahshua, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Saul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Spirit by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing, ye shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing, ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of Yahweh is sent unto the nations and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. 
and Saul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came unto him, preaching the kingdom of Yahweh and teaching those things which concern Yahshua the Messiah with all confidence, no man forbidding him. I just read for you Acts the 28th chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We want to thank everybody for tuning in on YouTube. And we also want to thank everybody that has joined us in the do in the Zoom session. And for um, our scripture reader today, it'll be Dr. Carol Dodd. But we also have visiting brethren with us from Northside Chicago, Drs. John and Myra Quaze. We welcome you in the bonds of peace and we love you. Um, for our first speaker, it's an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Myra Quaze. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This is my dinner time. And I am like right in the middle of eating. So, um, <laughs> it's okay. Listen, it's lovely. All right. Well, for our next speaker, it's an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Iris Jones. Good evening, class, and it's good to be here with you all this evening and to give a testimony of the things that Yahshua has so mercifully shared and given unto me down here at the end of this age. And we do want to thank him for his grace and his mercy and his ever presence teaching us down here at the end of this age, because we can see it coming apart at the seams. It's it's just, you, you look at the news, you know, you get out or and go to the grocery store or you have to go to work. The conversations that are being had, you know, people are in turmoil. And yet Yahshua calls us unto himself and says, sit and hear and receive this blessing. You see, this school, like the moderator told us, was founded by the means of a divine vision and revelation given to Henry Clifford Kinley in the year 1931. And before he went about to teach this great teaching, he had a chart painted out. The first chart being the pattern or plan of salvation. Yahweh showed that man how he had purposed salvation for his creation. You see, and when Dr. Kinley started to teach this teaching, he said, not to take his word for it, but to make him prove that he did indeed have a divine vision and revelation directly from the creator. Now, vision is absolutely necessary. I, I didn't know that when I first started coming to this school. You see, my sister had invited me to come and she had been telling me I needed to come for a year before I actually came. And how she got me to come to a class the first time was because I needed a babysitter. And the only way she would babysit for me is if I went to class with her. Now, the reason I, I needed and this is just a personal testimony, but Yahshua has done, he, look, I, from that day on, you know, I, I did not always appreciate it. I didn't always understand it, but he kept me here. He kept me here hearing him preach his gospel. You see, so now, 
I need a babysitter because I want to go to the racetrack. And I mean, horse races was just what I did on Sundays. That's, I, I had to be there every Sunday when the racetrack was open. And But the way I got there that Sunday was because I needed a babysitter. My sister was going to babysit for me if I went to class with her. Okay, I go to class with her. And the speaker at that time, the first speaker was Dr. Lewis Landry. Uh, yeah, Lewis Landry or her. He, he was from Baton Rouge. And the moderator was Justinian Atien. And he was from Lake Charles, Louisiana. And you know, those speakers, they delivered that that moderation just turned me inside out and I was so upset. And, and the speakers and what they were saying was, was just upsetting to me at that time. And I had no choice no recourse, but to go and look up what they were saying, because it was just something I had never heard before. And I could not believe that the priest that I had been listening to from the time I was brought to, you know, to an understanding of going to mass every Sunday was lying to me that way. I couldn't just, I just couldn't, it didn't make sense that they would do that. But he made me do the research, you see. And from that point on, I didn't do that good at the racetrack that day. And from that day on, I've never been to another racetrack. And he's kept me in class. You know, and it's, I just, he just turned me, like I said, it just turned me inside out. It took me about three months of actually going and asking questions and going to the library and looking at stuff. And every once in a while, she would come and put that little class book in front of me. And I started reading that. And then I came back to class and been here ever since. Personal testimony. However, this thing is real. And however he got each and every one of us, you see, was I was thinking it was my sister and those people that I heard for the first time from the floor saying all those things that they were saying, it wasn't them. It was Yahshua, Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah saying, it's time. You got to hear it. It's time you have to hear it. And every time I pick up a book, he says, it's time you have to hear it. So now we come to school and we learn that by the means of a divine vision and revelation, the creator gave a man his name. We learned who that man is that Yahweh gave his name to. And that man was Moses. We learned who our teacher is in this school. And our teacher is Yahshua the Messiah. We learn that it is impossible for his name to have been Jesus. Then it is impossible for his name to be Jesus now. Moses could not have heard him say that his name was Jehovah. No letter J in the Hebrew language to this day. 
it was impossible for him to be called that. But now by the means of a divine vision and revelation given to Moses, and we would not know about Moses' divine vision and revelation if Yahweh hadn't prepared somebody down here at the end of this age who could tell us what we needed to do, how we needed to hear this in order to learn about Moses and his vision. So now can we read please in Romans 10th chapter And I want to say the ninth or tenth verse. Can we start there? It's the tenth chapter and the ninth verse. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Yahshua the Messiah and shall believe in thine heart that Yahweh hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Keep going, Dr. Dye. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Keep going. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Yahweh over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahshua shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Thank but, you. Okay. Let, me, let me just stop you right there, Dr. Dodd. Now, let's go to um, Numbers 12 and 6. You see, Saul is telling us that in order to hear, they have to have a preacher. That preacher has to be sent. You see? Now, we hear preachers on television telling us about what God told them and, and their dreams and um, they were sent from God and all of that stuff. But now you see, the thing is, if Yahweh is going to send somebody, he's, he's got some credentials, you see. He's going to be telling us about Yahshua's purpose. So, and he's got to do it a prescribed way, a specific way. But let's get numbers 12 and 6, because Yahweh is going to tell us how he declares himself unto those whom he's chosen, unto his prophets. And he said, hear now my word. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. So now he's going to have to give that prophet a vision and a revelation. Now, if we go to Proverbs 29 and 18, can we read that, please? Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So now you see, if there's not a prophetic vision, people perish. Yahweh just said in Numbers 
12 and 6, if there's going to be a prophet among you, he, Yahweh, would make himself known unto that prophet in a vision and speak unto him in a dream. You see, Saul is saying here, if they have to hear, they have, in order to have some faith, they have to hear. And th that preacher that they're going to hear has to be sent. You see? And that's what the 28th chapter of Acts that Dr. Dodd just finished reading for us with Paul talking or Saul talking to those of the assembly at Rome, you see. And he taught from morning till night out of the law and the prophets telling them about Yahshua, the Messiah, preaching that gospel, telling them how Yahshua died how he was buried, and how he resurrected the third day according to the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. He tarried on the earth plain for 40 days, ascended up to the Father, and 10 days later, he was back in that 120 in the upper room, you see. And seven years later, Peter went to Cornelius' house and preached the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. He didn't preach anything different. He preached how Yahshua died, how he had buried, how he had been buried, how he resurrected the third day. He tarried with them for those 40 days. He ascended up to the Father, and 10 days later, he was back in them. You see, and it says that the Holy Spirit fell on all those that heard the word. That completed what he had promised to Abraham in, I think, is Genesis. Can we read it? Genesis, I want to say the 15th chapter. Genesis, the 15th chapter, and the first verse. After these things, the word of Yahweh came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Down to the twelfth verse. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, nor of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Okay, thank you. No, what it might be the 12th chapter that I'm looking for where he said that he was going to bless all the nations of the earth through his seed. Yes, Genesis 12 and 1. Okay. Now Yahweh said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Thank you. That's what I want. Now, you see, when he preached at Cornelius' house, bringing in the Gentiles. It, it was done. Well, he said it was done when he was hanging on the cross. It was finished. What he needed to do to secure that salvation was done. He, had give, he was giving up that spirit, you see, 
that we had principles and precepts that we have to follow. But now our teacher, who is the Holy Spirit, whose name is Yahshua, instructs us that we must begin at Moses. You see, and when we go back to Moses, we're going to see how Moses was born under a death decree. His mother hid him for a period of three months. When she could no longer hide him, she built an ark, a bulrush, and she dabbed it within and without with slime and pitch. She waterproofed it. You see, she put that baby in the ark and she covered him over. You see, she put him in the flags of the brinks of the river Nile and set his sister to see what would happen to the child. Pharaoh's daughter would bathe in the Nile River. And, her, and she, set, she saw the, the basket, the ark, and she sent her handmaiden to fetch it. And when she pulled the blanket off of the baby, he wept. You see, she identified him as one of the Hebrew children. Now, at the time she's finding this baby, this Hebrew baby boy, there's a death decree going out to kill all the boys two years and under Hebrew children, two years and Hebrew male children, two years and under. Moses fit that criteria, but Yahweh put compassion in that woman's heart. And she chose to save that baby's life. Now, Moses' sister, who was set to see what would happen to the child, she goes to Pharaoh's daughter and asks if she wanted one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for her. And the woman, the, uh, Pharaoh's daughter said, yes, and I'll pay her. Now, you see, Moses was given back to his mother to be weaned. And when he was weaned, she brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter. She named him Moses because she had drawn him out of that basket or, or in that water, you see. So now Moses grows up in Pharaoh's house for a period of 40 years. You see, he goes out in, in, to be with his Hebrew brethren. He sees an Egyptian intending to kill a Hebrew. He intercedes, he kills the Egyptian and buries him in the sand. Now he's still out there with his Hebrew brethren and the, he, the two Hebrews started fighting, you know, and he intercedes again. So one of them asked, are you gonna kill me the way you killed that Egyptian yesterday? Now Moses, understands that he has to get up out of Egypt because they're going to surely seek his life. So Moses leaves out of the land of Egypt where he rests by a well and he helps the seven daughters of Jethro Ruel water his flocks. Now look, Yahweh is showing this to Moses in a divine vision and revelation, okay? And he, well, actually at this point, Moses is living this part, where he helps those seven girls water their father's flock. They get home early. Their dad wants to know why. They tell him that an Egyptian helped him. Moses is a Hebrew. He has on Egyptian clothing but he is a Hebrew. So he wants the girls to go and invite him to dinner. Moses ends up staying there and marrying the oldest daughter of Jethro. Ru Ru <clears throat> I'm sorry. After a period of 40 years, he's tending his father-in-law's flock. And he sees a divine vision. He sees a vision. He sees a bush that's burning and not being consumed. And he turns aside to see this great sight. Now, that's where we are at in Exodus, the third chapter. You see? And when he turns aside to see, 
Yahweh speaks to this man, Moses. Can we start, please, at Exodus 3 and 1? Exodus, the third chapter, first verse. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses mm -hmm. said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of thy father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of the Isaac, Elohim. the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. Now, let me just stop you right there, Dr. Don. So now, Moses is having this divine vision, and Elohim is speaking to him. And Elohim tells him who he is, and he also refers to the man by his name. Now, when you had your first invitation to class, you know, you may have liked the person, maybe not. You could have been related to them, maybe not. You know, whatever the case is, you were called by your name. And you might have thought it was that person. And it was Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah telling you it's time. You need to hear. You see? So now... Moses is going to be given specific instructions here because he says that he has seen the affliction of the children of Israel. He knows their sorrows. You see, he's heard their cries. And now he's telling Moses, you're going to have to come now, therefore. So now he's summoning Moses to come to where he is. Now, he's talking to Moses on the backside of this mount while Moses is taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. But he's telling Moses, you got to come to where I am and I'm going to send you to the children of Israel and Pharaoh so you could tell them that the children of Israel going to have to come here and serve me at this mill. You see, so these are the things that Yahweh, through Yahshua the Messiah, is showing us. He's had mercy on us down here at the end of an age to show us the deliverance throughout the dispensations and ages with unerring accuracy and in constant repetition, he brings us back to Moses. And we got to go back to Moses because if we don't go back to Moses, we're not going to know what happened with Adam because Adam didn't write anything. We're not going to know what happened with Noah and that ark because Noah didn't write anything. You see, that was an end of an age with Noah. And he didn't write it down. You see, there was an end that happened with that fall of when Adam partook of that fruit and that disobedience occur, time started. We would not know that 
if we don't go back to Moses because he showed those things to Moses. And Moses had to come back and tell the scribes what it was that Yahweh was showing him. So now when we go back to Moses, we can pick up the Genesis because it it Moses didn't see it until after they exited out of the land of Egypt. So that exodus had to happen first before we saw Five how. Five minutes. Five minutes. Thank, thank you, Dr. Williams. That exodus had to happen before we saw what happened in the beginning of Moses' vision, you see? And then we don't know, because if we start reading the Bible and it says in the beginning was the word, and no, that's John 1 and 1, I'm sorry. Uh, Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Thank you. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now, that's the beginning of Moses' vision. But without an understanding, and you pick up that Bible, and you're reading, and you're going to think that that's the beginning of the creation. That's the beginning of Moses' vision. The, to get the beginning of the creation, we must go back to John, the first chapter and the first verse, where it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Now, that is the beginning of the creation. Yahweh putting on a shape and form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. And it tells us later on in that chapter, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. You see, we would not know these things if we didn't have somebody who came and told us about a divine vision and revelation telling us not to take his word for it, but to make him prove until he was until we were satisfied that he did indeed have a divine vision and revelation directly from the creator. You see, he took us back to the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms and showed us over and over again in absolute detail unerring accuracy, constant repetition over and over and over again so that we can have some faith. You see, in those things that the creator has prepared for us from the foundation of the world, look, he did everything he said he was going to do to save our souls. You see, we have that salvation in him. He has told us what the warfare is. He has told us where we're standing. You see, we need to be standing in the holy place. You see, and he tells us in Matthew 24 and 14 and 15, when you shall therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, you stand in that holy place. You see, you, you can't be fearful. You see, you have to be able to stand. You have to be able to see the salvation of Yahweh. That is Yahshua, the Messiah, in us. And that is our only hope of glory. We don't, there's nothing here to depend on. Nothing physical we can depend on. All we have is what Yahshua has placed in our hearts and minds, stabilizing our soul so that we can know his ever-presence 
in us. Brethren, if you got anything out of it, all praise, honor, and glory go to Yahweh. Let's hold one another up. Let's keep preaching this gospel because, you know, there's, there's just nothing else. He is taking this thing apart. We have a place to stand. We got our coat of armor. We know what the warfare is, and we know he's got the battle won. All praise and honor go to him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Iris Jones. For our next speaker, it's an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Tennille Williams. In class. Good evening. Uh, I truly enjoyed the remarks to the last speaker. Uh, definitely encouraging words. Um, I definitely enjoyed uh, how she got kind of introduced to class. Um, I did not grow up in class, as some of you uh, may know. Um, Yashua sent my husband to to bring me on in into class. It wasn't something that I was necessarily. Um, looking for, um, and it was not necessarily something I think I was even asking for. All I knew is I was trying to find me a husband that was faithful and knew how to be a husband. <laughs> so <laughs> I had been hoping and praying, and, and had, at, at, at that time, I, I wasn't even going to the Kingdom Hall at that time, um, but I had prayed and prayed and prayed and said I was tired of dating and send me somebody that knew just a little bit, just a little bit of the Bible. And who knew that I was going to not only get a husband, but I was also going to get um, a better understanding of my spiritual husband, uh, Joshua the Messiah, and getting a better understanding of who he is and his purpose and how he actually exists um, and how um, that he resides within me and directs uh, my every step. So um, like the last speaker said, it, it Everybody has a story. Everybody has a way they came in class. Some people come in class, probably their story is a little bit more eccentric than mine, um, but I consider it a blessing uh, either way. I enjoyed the um, scripture lesson and it was just one part that really, really stuck out to me. And I think it'll kind of follow in line with what the last speaker was talking about. Dr. Dad, can you grab that X? Um, next chapter was at the 28th chapter. And can you start... Um, at verse 26 and read to 27. That's Acts 28 and 26. Saying, go unto this people and say, hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes, and their eyes have they closed. Stop right there for just one second, Dr. Di. So I thought that was very, uh, informative because that's the day and the time that we're living in right now. Everybody's focus is on everything else but their creator, um, their uh, spiritual well-being. Um, nobody is concerned with that. They have closed their ears. They've closed their hearts. They've closed their eyes uh, spiritually uh, to what's really, really important. And we have seen like the last speaker uh, brought out by going back um, to the law and to the testimony, you see the example um, there of the Israelites many, many times while they were in, uh, before they were in the land of um, Egypt, when they were in the land of Egypt, when they were resurrected up out of the land of Egypt, when they uh, were given um, the fulfillment of their, um, uh, what Yahweh had promised to give them, they were constantly being called a stiff necked people. Um, he would get, he gave them a law um, to follow, gave them, um, even though he knew that they would not be able um, to keep that law, he gave them a way for uh, repentance um, by um, instructing them to build that tabernacle 
um, that he would reside among them um, to try to, you know, keep them on a straight and narrow. But he knew that that was not that was not going to be the all in all because if he was not residing in them. And the same thing with the people that we um, come in contact with today, um, they are stiff neck people. They could care less about their, their spiritual well being. Um, and even um, after being preached to and, and, and told to, they still tend to kind of keep those ears closed and they look at us like we're crazy and we don't know what we're talking about. Um, why are you concerned about that? What about A, B, C, and D and the government and this and this and that? And they don't realize that those things are not important. Um, what is important um, is your spiritual being and that one-on-one -on -one, um, relationship that you have um, with Yahshua Messiah. Can you finish that um, verse for me, Dr. Dye? That's Acts 28 and 27. For the heart of this people is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. I see if they would just, just listen and pay attention. Just listen, and that's what we're told every time we come to class. They instruct us at the beginning of class to silence our cell phones. And even in the prayers um, that we hear some of the brethren give at the beginning of class, ask them Joshua, to clear our minds of the outside world and to open our hearts and our minds so that we can receive whatever he has brought um, to use, um, to speak through the vessel, um, to give to us. That stuff is important, keeping our eyes and, and our ears and our hearts open to it, thus saith Yahweh. And these people back here during um, the time of Paul, the same thing, same thing that's going on today was going on back then. They were not listening. They were not heeding. They were not paying attention. And if you notice, it says, if they would hear, if, if they would listen, if they would see, they would be converted. But what would be converted? That dead soul. It has nothing to do with the physical as we have learned coming into this class. It is the soul that live on. It is the soul that lives forever. It is that soul that is important. This fleshly body is going to one day, we're all going to take it off eventually one day in one way or another. But it's that soul that lives on. And you want to make sure that that is what is in good standing with the creator. Can we get um, Psalms 19 and 7? Psalms 19 and 7. The law of Yahweh is perfect, mm -hmm. converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. Mm -hmm. So see, it is the law of Yahweh. That law, that internal law, that Yahshua the Messiah, that is converting the soul. It is he that converts the soul. It is nothing that we can do of our own. He has to be the one to do that. But our ears and our eyes and our hearts must be open. So we always want to make sure that we are asking um, Yahshua to keep our eyes on the prize. I think there's a scripture that says something to that extent, but I can't remember where it is. Keeping our eyes on the prize. And that is to be one with Yahshua the Messiah. That is um, our, our, our goal at the end, um, to become one with him and to be with him in that kingdom. Um, not an earthly kingdom, spiritual kingdom. Uh, we learn from being in this class not to have a carnal mind. Um, it's easy to get swept up in the carnality of this world and to be worried about what we're going to do tomorrow, what's going to happen today, and, and this and that, and caught up in work and family and um, the politics of this world. But we always have to constantly ask God to keep our mind and our hearts clear and to stay focused on him. I can't even say it enough. Dealing with the public every day, it, 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 uh, it does tend to kind of uh, turn you just a little bit. I know for myself, because I work in a dentist office, so I'm working in the health um, care uh, field. Sometimes it's hard to keep, keep my mind focused and to not get drawn up in the nonsense that happens to go on out here. Um, so I have to constantly ask Joshua to keep my mind clear. 
Um, let's get um, let's get uh, Zechariah one and four, because like the last speaker said, we want to make sure that we are not following in the path of the examples that we have, like the Israelites. And many, many times here we have in the uh, book of Zechariah, there um, Yahweh is telling them, "Don't be caught up like your forefathers were." And we know they were kind of being stiff-necked people. They never listen. Um, they, it's almost like raising kids. You tell them once, you tell them twice, you tell them a third time. And sometimes you got to tell them over and over again. It's a constant repeat. Listen, listen, listen. Um, he had to constantly keep telling the children of Israel, do not worship idols. We even have today people are worshiping anything and everything, even themselves. Um, even if they're doing it and not even knowingly doing it, they're doing it. Um, putting their, their, their jobs and, and, and family before their creator. Those things have become more important than their spiritual well-being. And we don't want to be like our forefathers, the Israelites, and all the many other examples that have been laid um, in the Bible um, as examples for us to take a look at and say, hey, you know, they went the wrong path. They, th this is not the way that we need to be going. We need to be seeking out Yahshua. You can go ahead and read that, Dr. Dye. Zechariah 1 and 4. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways, mm -hmm. and from your evil doings. Mm -hmm. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, saith Yahweh. So notice we said they did not hear. We are constantly being told to hear and listen. I always think back when I, anytime I read a scripture and I think about that word here, I think about how the children of Israel, they got that law at the foot there of Mount Sinai. And they say, everything that Yahweh has asked of us, we will do. And we often always say that he married them there um, at that mountain. They agreed. They were under contract. The same thing when you stand um, before the, the, the judge and say, uh, yes, I do. I'm going to marry this person for the rest of my life till death do us part. We know people break that every second of the day. Anytime I get patients that come into my office and I hear they've been married for 50 some years, 60 some years, the next thing I always say is, well, you don't hear about that things like that anymore because you don't. They, they get married and, they, and two seconds later, they're not even together anymore. Absolutely ridiculous. We know that Yahweh did not intend uh, it to be that way. He married Israel and he intended to, to be with them for all time and eternity. As a matter of fact, even after they had made so many indiscretions, he would clean them up and he would preserve them alive. He would punish them and he would forgive them. Just like he does with us today. We fall short, he corrects us, and then he helps us and picks us back up and keeps us keeps us going and motivated on our way but this scripture here hearing not only that after they sat there and they said everything that Yahweh said that um asked of us people do not very long after that they were made, building that golden cab and they were taking off the earrings and taking all of the jewels and things that the Egyptians had given them as they departed that Yahweh uh and struck had told them to take from the land of is the land of Egypt, they threw those earrings and made that golden calf. They gave away their hearing. They they closed up their hearing. They weren't paying attention anymore. They could care less what had been said after they had agreed to the contract. We don't want to be like that. Um, we, I often hear and I think it's it's a blessing when I hear about people that had at one time come in, had been in class and then had left for some time and then Yahweh saw fit to bring them back. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Just as he was merciful with those children of Israel and many, 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 many times over, he has been ever so merciful with us today, picking us up where we fall short, giving us that correction. I tell my kids all this time, just because I punish you doesn't mean that I don't love you. Punishment is good. Correction is good. I mean, I used to hate it when I was a kid. My parents would say, I do this because I love you. And I just couldn't believe it. I said, ah, you would not spank me if you love me. But once I had kids, I understood. <laughs> and I told my kids the same thing. You, when you have kids, you're going to do the same thing and they will understand. 
So don't be afraid to take that correction, um, whether it comes to the floor, whether it's something that Yahweh um, corrects you personally within yourself. We accept all of that. So that way you can keep us on the straight and narrow. So that way we aren't closing our ears and we're keeping our eyes open. Um, I also wanted to get um, uh, Isaiah, let's get Isaiah 6, 9 through 10. Because that also confirmed what was um, the scriptures in Acts that we read. Or, yes, it's not with you. Isaiah 6 and 9. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. So you see how important that converting, converting of the soul. We often hear in class that we all came in under the influence of a negative spirit. We hear that all the time. We all came at one point um, before we got that, had that Holy Spirit in, in, instilled in us, um, because as we learn, not everybody has the Holy Spirit, even though that seems to be a bit of a controversy. But when we know that we have been, um, Yahweh has, uh, Yahshua has gone ahead and instilled that Holy Spirit in us and has given us an understanding, because like the last speaker said, without uh, uh, a prophetic uh, vision, the people perish. And you also need to have that understanding. And Yahweh gives you that understanding. It's a beautiful thing to have your eyes open. And that's how your eyes are open when he gives you that understanding. It allows you to hear better. It allows you to perceive things better. As a matter of fact, it even allows you to, as you your eyes are open and you read um, the scriptures, your eyes are open to what is really being said in there. And it opens your understanding. There's so many um little trinkets and, and, and little details that I know me myself have read over time and time again and had never paid attention to. But now when I read, I pick the words apart. I pay attention to how the sentences are put together. I look up the meaning of words. It forces you to want to know. It opens up your understanding, it opens up your eyes, it opens up your heart. It makes you want to get to know your creator better. You want to have that Holy Spirit. You, you must understand after coming into this class that it is your body that is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have Yahshua residing in you, directing your step, and you want him to continue to direct your step. You want him to go ahead and sweep that temple sweep that inside sweep your whole insides out of everything that you have learned um previously or that you have been exposed to um previously dr kim used to always say everything that you had before you came into this teaching you need to take to the dump and i had a whole lot and i'm still taking stuff to the dump still things that i didn't even realize had been so enthralled <clears throat> enthralled and installed in me that I had no idea I was holding on to. I have to constantly ask for him to go ahead and remove those things and replace it with what is true and what is correct. What is correct. Nobody wants to be lied to. I didn't know I had been lied to. I didn't even know that um, some of the things that I had been taught were incorrect. My parents taught me what they knew and it's of no fault of their own. That's what they, you know, they taught me what they knew, what their parents taught them. But it is a blessing that he um, used, who is now my husband, um, to help teach me what I needed to know. That's what he uses a vessel to do whatever he chooses to use a vessel for. We always say whoever, you may think somebody invited you to class, but it was actually last when they invited you to class. And it really is. It, it really, really is. And it's a beautiful thing to be invited. To 
be allowed to sit at that table and to be able to feast. And it's not just you sitting at that table, it's everyone here. When we come to class, we're all sitting at that table and we're feasting and we're eating and we're learning something new. Even if it is one small thing, keeping our eyes and ears open, keeping our heart open, not closing it to the truth. Um, let's get Matthew um, 12, uh, 43 and 44. And that's where Yahshua is, is talking and letting them know about um, having that house weapon and varnish. That's Yahshua coming in and converting uh, that soul, kicking out all of that extraness that we may have had in there. Matthew, the 12th chapter and the 43rd verse. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Mm -hmm. He saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation and we know that we are definitely living through a wicked time you can't even turn on the tv you don't even have to be watching the news to see that there's just so much stuff going on out here. That's why in every class, somebody, whether it be somebody speaking from the floor, a prayer, a, a, a verse from um, uh, the scripture lesson is always telling us to hold, hold on. We wanna be um, like uh, at the Red Sea when uh, they told, that, when he, Moses was told, tell the children of Israel to stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. We are doing the same thing during these times that are going on right now. We are standing still, shakingly standing still, holding each other's hand, holding, just trying to hold stand and hold on to what we know, uh, making sure that what we know is unadulterated, uh, making sure that we are holding on to the, what they is, thus said Yahweh, making sure um, that if we are seeing our brethren shaking or falling or falling by the wayside, just like we read in Acts, Paul was sent down there and was told that he needed to preach and he needed to uh, do some, uh, send some words of correction and encouragement. He was constantly doing that. He was constantly going to those congregations, trying to help them build their faith, helping them to correct them on what was, what was right and what was um things from the law that they were trying to keep because even though even today like people are trying to keep um that law that was not given to us and was only given to the jews and that it was nailed to the cross and moved out of the way by yashua's death burial and resurrection and ascension the same thing was going on there they were trying to keep that law they were holding on to things they didn't need to hold on to they weren't getting uh, getting along in the congregation, they were concerned about who was above who, things like that. It's the same thing that's happening now. And we are constantly asking Yahshua to keep us out of that and to keep, stand before, stand before him and say everything that you ask that we will do. That preaching is also part of what we need to do. When we are moved, um, to reach out to one of our brethren or reach out to somebody who happened to be at work or run into at the store, or even if it be a family being moved um, to uh, declare the name of Yahweh, it's important to go ahead and do that because that's what we are, we, that's what we should do. That's part of our job. When we are given this gift, it is our responsibility to pass that gift on to the next person because it is a gift. We didn't do anything to receive it. It was given to us. And what better uh, appreciation for that gift than to pass that gift on to the next person? Because it's the saving of souls. And that's what's important, like I was saying before. It is the soul that is important. So I, I really didn't have, have very much, but I just thought that was just so beautiful, um, that converting of the soul. And we, like I said, we, it, it's easy to lose track of what is important. 
just because there's so much stuff out here to get sidetracked with. We know the children of Israel, they were constantly getting sidetracked. Every time they came in contact with another nation, it was like they almost forgot that they had made that agreement, that they were not going to serve any other false gods, that they, that they were not going to uh, intermingle with the other nations. We're told that even now, not to intermingle, that we need to stay fast and to keep what's on the outside on the outside and to not let that come into our temple like it was said in that last um, scripture letting more in that was there than the, than that was there before especially after it's been cleaned out we don't need anything penetrating in there we don't want anything but that gospel that death burial resurrection of Yahshua's side that's what we want on the inside keeping that temple clean keeping our minds and our hearts clean because that's what he's there for um can we get the um scripture about Yahshua being the comforter John 14 and 26 but the comforter which is the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now see here, he is the comforter. He's going to bring all things to your remembrance. He's going to make sure that you don't forget anything. And whatever he causes you, whatever he brings to your remembrance, he's going to bring it to your remembrance at the right appointed time. Just when you think all is lost. He's going to be there to pick up those pieces. Allow him to do that. That's his job. Just like with our kids. As they're growing up, when they fall by the wayside, they make mistakes. We're there to help them get back on track. He is our father. He is our husband. He, he is our, our head. Let him lead. Just like with a, a, a marriage, it, it, it is the head that leads the family. Let him lead the family. Let him lead you and, and steer your footsteps where they should go. So um, with those few words, I'm going to go ahead and yield the floor. If you got anything out of that, all praise and honor go to Yashua Messiah. And everybody just, just hold tight. It's, it, the end is coming to you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Tamil Williams. For our next speaker, we'd like to follow on the Dean of Muskegon, Michigan branch, Dr. Uh, James Dye. Good evening. Good evening. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you. I enjoyed the previous speakers and their testimony. We talk about how this is a school. It is not a church. It is a product of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder in 1931. And he said he had a divine vision and revelation from Yahweh himself, make me prove it until you're satisfied with it. That's supposed to be a difficult thing, but he's going to do this by the scriptures. I want to go back to Acts the... When Yes, 28th chapter. Made me think about something. Think, made me think about West Virginia. <laughs> Go ahead and read that. Acts the 28th chapter and the first verse. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. Now, this is Paul, and he's taking a journey. He's on his way to Rome. Now, there's something you should know about this. Now, when Paul, now, well, I don't well, we'll do this first because we'll have to go back and pick them up maybe in the 26th chapter of Acts of the Apostle. Maybe just go back there anyway, Doc. Acts the 26th chapter and the first verse. Mm -hmm. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, mm -hmm. Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Mm -hmm. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Mm -hmm. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, mm -hmm. especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Maybe you ought to put up the uh, chart on the pattern of plan of salvation. Now we're talking about, now Paul begins back there in the plate we call persecution. Maybe we'll take a look at that. And that's what we pick up. Now he's persecuting the Jews. See, 
because he was a Pharisees and they say he was taught by Gamaliel and Gamaliel, now he wanted to do something to get some attention, said he was a eunuch. And uh, what happened is, now what you see in this play, I guess you see uh, in the court roundabout, you see a dragon. You have uh, the stars on his tail. You see a dead man down there. You see these people on the right side under the blood with the spear going through it, blood and water. You understand, you should know now, we'll just talk about this a little bit in the court roundabout. You see two men in the water. Now on this chart, is, I say these charts are color coded. So in the court roundabout, we're looking at that dragon and we're looking at the stars around his tail, that's typical. And we're looking at the seven heads and supposedly I guess it's 10 crowns. And then you got, it's uh, Stephens, you understand, one of the deacons and he's being stoned and they're laying that garment. What chapter is that? Eight or seven? Hmm? It's the part, last part of seventh chapter of Acts. Last few verses in there. Acts, the seventh chapter. It's 54. And the 54th verse. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on them with their teeth. Stop a minute. Go back to the first verse, please. Acts, the seventh chapter, and the first verse. Mm -hmm. Then said the high priest, are these things so? And he said, men and brethren, and fathers hearken. The Elohim of glory appeared unto our father Abraham mm -hmm. when he was in Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. before he dwelt in Charan. Now, the first speaker kind of talked about Abraham. Now, this is kind of a summary. This is, in a sense, is a summary or is, is a history, a short history dealing with what happened back there with Moses. So he's beginning back there. We'll say beginning with Moses because Moses is a credit to writing the first five books of the Bible. He's writing that by way of a vision. He, he writes the Genesis. He sees all the way up to his birth in his life or and he writes about that. You understand? But go ahead and read that. That's Acts 7 and three, mm -hmm. and said unto him, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I will show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans, mm -hmm. and dwelt in Sharan. Mm -hmm. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. Mm -hmm. That was Canaan land. And he gave him none inheritance in it. Mm -hmm. No, not so much as to set his foot on. Well, he promised to give it to his offspring. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after mm -hmm. him. Sound like something we're familiar with back there in Genesis. Go ahead. When as yet he had no child. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. So he's telling him before he even have a seed that his, his seed is going to go into the land of Egypt and it's going to be there and it's going to, what you say? Serve them 400 years. And serve them for 400 years. So they're going to go in the land of Egypt, out the land of Canaan land that he promised Abraham and they're going to be down there for 40 years. Okay, read on. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage, will I judge? No, he's going to judge that nation. Saith Yahweh. Kind and of talking about the same same way we kind of talk down, talk down in this school. You understand? Read. Beginning at Moses, all the prophets expounded of begin with the man Abraham back there. You understand? And his seed. Abraham didn't write no book, as the previous speaker said. He didn't write nothing. Enoch didn't write nothing. Adam didn't write nothing. Moses is the first one to come in contact with Yahweh, Elohim, at the burning bush. Moses is the first one that Yahweh revealed to him a rerun of the creation and the history of the creation of heavens and the earth on down to 
his the death decree that he he goes through on down to the twelve plagues in the land of Egypt, and eventually in Mount Sinai he shows him how to he sees Yahweh Elohim, Father, Word, Holy Spirit, and how to conduct construct the intangible tabernacle or the tangible tabernacle in the wilderness of Sinai, which is the most holy place, holy place in the court roundabout. And Elohim himself, Yahweh Elohim, the word of son of Yahweh, and his incorporeal, super incorporeal body is the archetype pattern of the universe. And we use this intangible tabernacle, the tabernacle in the book of Exodus that the children of Israel pitched in the wilderness of Sinai. And he says, everything in the universe or everything in the creation and all these places we're going to be looking at is going to be threefold, the most holy place, holy place, but round about of the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, these three are one. Or we're going to, you can do it that way. They're going to be threefold in nature. We have seven steps that we can walk through by the pattern. You understand that we can go through it, blood, water, spirit, or resurrection 40 and ascension of death burial resurrection 40 third day resurrection and ascension see all the way through and every place is going to kind of reflect that but we want to get back to this story jump down to the part we started with down there where stephan's the stone and that's what we're looking at okay you understand that's back to acts 7 and now, this dragon that you're looking at, it represents pagan Rome. Now, in Paul's journey, he's on the way to Rome, and he's on the way to talk to Caesar. But at this time, he's been he's received letters, go ahead, to go into, well, is that in the seventh chapter, he's found any in the way? That's sixth chapter of Acts, where he says yeah. he found any in the way? Yeah. Okay. Back over to Acts, the seventh chapter and the 54th verse. And they heard these things. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed or gashed on him with their teeth. Well, but I'm thinking he, about the sixth chapter, God. Where, back where to he, Acts, the sixth where chapter. Paul uh -huh. gets these letters. Acts, the sixth chapter. Well, it's not in there. All yet? Threatenings? Read them out for everything. Okay, if you can't find it, just go back to the April. It's Stephen's or Stephen's stone. Okay. We're going to go back to Acts 7 and 54. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Mm -hmm. But he being full of the Holy Spirit looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of Yahweh and Yahshua standing on the right hand of Yahweh and said, behold, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of Yahweh. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears mm -hmm. and ran upon him with one accord mm -hmm. and cast him out of the city and stoned him. Mm -hmm. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Yes. Yeah, so what we're looking at, we're looking at this persecution place. We're looking at the Jewish persecution and we're looking at certain things in there. We're looking at the gospel being preached beginning at Jerusalem. You understand? And because of the persecution, they're leaving Jerusalem and only the apostles were left there. You understand? See? And that's dragon. That dragon is there. You see the woman clothed in the sun, the moon under her feet. You understand? That's the bride of Yahshua the Messiah. She's the head and then she's pregnant. You understand? In this picture. And she's delivering the gospel of the kingdom. Now, if they just received the Holy Spirit, and they're trying to cut it off to continue the practice of cardinal ordinances. You understand? So Saul was persecuting the Jewish assembly. If he found any in that way, he would bring them to Jerusalem or captives for not for for not continue the practice of cardinal ordinances. Now, right, so also in this picture, you see that spear that we said that they pierced Yahshua in the side. It's a long spear, forthwith came blood and water. 
Now, there are two colors of the water you should notice. You got blue water, which typical is the practice of physical water baptism. And that's where he met, I guess it was the Ethiopian eunuch there, maybe on his way to, uh, well, well, there's a eunuch. And he was reading out the book of Isaiah. And, and Philip, because of the persecution, is going to Caesarea. And that's what you're kind of looking at. So now you have physical water, practice of physical water continue. And then that water in the white represents baptism of the Holy Spirit. You understand? So that's why the water, you have two colors of that water. So we'll go back over there and read about Paul's journey back there when you were in the uh, 28th chapter. But that's what you're kind of looking at when you look at this plate. Now, he's lining those things up with typical on that water line, you understand? That's pagan Rome. That's the dragon that's in power that killed Yahshua the Messiah. And maybe that's not the, well, but go ahead. Back to Acts 28 and 1. Mm -hmm. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Malia. Mm -hmm. And the barbarous people them no little kindness. Mm -hmm. Now they call the other folks barbarians. You had Romans, you had then they call the other people, other nations barbarians. Go ahead. For they kindled a fight. And they kindled a fight. And received us everyone mm -hmm. because of the present rain and because of the cold. Because Paul is kind of shipwrecked. That's why he's there, but or something maybe. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks mm -hmm. and laid them on the fire. Now here he is, Brent. Uh, gathering a bundle of sticks and he's laying them on the fire. And there came a viper out of the heat. Now hold up. I think I want you to go to like Mark. Mark. Like 16 or 15 or somewhere where where he said they pick up any unclean thing or get a, they can pick up serpents. And... Uh, that's Mark 16 and 15. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. go ye into all the world. Now we're talking about them after receiving the Holy Spirit. Well, actually, we're talking about Yahshua, the Messiah. You understand? As he ascended, he's telling them on the Mount of Olives, go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel. And preach the gospel. To every creature. To every creature. He that believeth. And is baptized. He shall that be saved. believe it and is baptized. Now he's not talking about physical water baptism. He's talking about immersion of baptism with the Holy Spirit in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. You understand? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In this present kingdom age, it's a spiritual baptism. It's not a physical baptism. So this dragon and Paul was trying to continue the practice of physical water baptism was never given to a Gentile in the first place. But go ahead, Dr. He that believe and is baptized. He that believe and is baptized shall, with the Holy be, Spirit saved. shall be saved. But, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Mm -hmm. And these signs shall follow them. Now we're that talking believe. about the signs that follows them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. In my name they're going to cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Well, we talked about speaking in tongues. Well, we talked about, now this is a new tongue. You understand that we speak in this school. We're trying to get through the Holy Spirit of Yahshua. We're trying to get you to, to, get you to understand the purpose, the pattern, and the plan of salvation as it operates through the dispensation of age in ages. That is a new tongue. You understand? That is a heavenly language that's being taught in this school that you have to learn because you don't know it, just like computer language. You know, so some of the scientists, you don't know all those terms, anatomy and physiology that we talk about in this school by the pattern. You understand? There's some new terms. They'll speak with what, Doc? They shall speak with new tongues. With new tongues. You see, ain't nobody speak to tell you ain't never heard of Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. It's a new tongue. They shall take up serpents. And it's really an old tongue. <laughs> they shall take up serpents. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink in the deadly thing. Now, if they drink in the deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. 
Mm -hmm. They shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. And they shall recover. That is. Yes, continue. So then after Yahshua had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of Yahweh. So he ascended on up into heaven, sat on the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. So we're back at Acts 28th Acts. chapter, and we're talking about why Paul, maybe we ought to go to, uh, did I have your 26? 26 chapter? Yes. Okay, back to Acts 28. And the first verse. Mm -hmm. Agrippa. Yes. Back to Acts 26 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Now, because Paul had a pre appeal to Caesar, they were going to send him to Rome. But before he got to Rome, now, you know, when they crucified the Messiah and Pontius Pilate was there. They said, we have no king but Caesar. You understand? Now, Paul, who was a Roman citizen, born free, you understand? He was preaching the gospel, and they were trying to kill him. So they, so he appealed. He went. Now, he, Doc Kenny said there was king, there's priest, and there's governor that he was dealing with. You understand? And they said he was going to go to kings and priests. But go ahead, read on that. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, mm -hmm. especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Mm -hmm. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews which knew me from the beginning if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee. Now we talk about sex, greed, cults, and vain philosophers but after the straightest sex he was a what? Pharisee. A I Pharisee. lived a Pharisee. You understand that Yahshua was there when he was spoken to them at 12 years old in the temple. You understand he had come controversy. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. You understand? You had Sadducees, you had Edesees, you had others too, but go ahead. And now I stand and am our judge for the hope of the promise made of Yahweh unto our fathers. No, this is the hope of the promise was made to their fathers. You understand? That through his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. All the way back to Abraham. Go ahead, read on. Unto which promise are twelve tribes. Mm -hmm. Instantly serving Yahweh day and night, mm -hmm. hope to come. For which hope sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that Yahweh should raise the dead? Mm. I barely thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Now of he's Nazareth. talking about the name. Yahweh is spirit, and this name is important to him. You see, he without any particular descriptive shape and form, and all the way through there, even he gave Moses his name, and he and they built those temples. The the temple, you understand, Solomon said was built for the name of Yahweh, and Yahweh would keep Israel because of his holy namesake. So the name is vitally important to Yahweh, who is spirit. Go ahead, Doc. With 10th verse, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And many of the sons that I shut up in prison. Mm -hmm. Now, see, that was the persecution where he was setting up the sons, and he found in the way of the truth and the light, he would take them bound into prison. You understand? Now, keep in mind that the Jewish way of of sentencing you to death was stoning. Well, Yahshua had to, there was a particular way that Yahshua had to die. He had to be crucified. You understand? Nailed to the cross in fulfillment of the law and the prophets. You understand? But go ahead. Having received authority from the chief priests. Now that's where he got his authority from. Right? And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. So that's where 
Stevens is put to death, and he gave his voice against them. And I punished them off in every synagogue, mm -hmm. and compelled them to blaspheme. Mm -hmm. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Mm -hmm. where so you see them in the persecution plate that they're they're leaving because of the persecution. The only people stayed there was the apostles. You understand? But go ahead. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests mm -hmm. at midday, O King, I saw in the way a light from heaven mm -hmm. above the brightness of the sun. Now you got a light above the brightness of the sun, and we go into that debate. Well, what's the true sun? They think that the veg vegetable kingdom, the third day when it resurrected, on the fourth day the sun came in and they can't reconcile that looking at now the son that he's looking at is yahshua the messiah the holy spirit you see the one that shines the outshine the noonday sun shining right about me and them which journeyed with me mm -hmm. and when we were fallen to the earth i heard a voice speaking mm -hmm. unto me and saying in the hebrew tongue mm -hmm. so what language that speaking now, keep in mind, even when we reached way back there, it wasn't until the Tower of Babel, you understand, after the flood, that Yahweh changed the, lang the language. You understand? Now, I, I always like to ask the question, was Abraham a Jew or a Gentile? And people just said, well, he was of the Hebrew. But before that, they were all of one language and one speech. You understand? See, until he chose that man to make a nation. And Yahweh made a nation out of those people. See, but go ahead, read. And one. saying in the Hebrew tongue, mm -hmm. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Mm -hmm. It is hard for thee to kick against the prince. Mm -hmm. And I said, Who art thou, sire? Mm -hmm. And he said, I am Yahshua, whom thou persecutest. Mm -hmm. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. So Yahweh can appear unto anybody that he chooses and you can't put yourself in there. Go ahead. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Now, he's going to send Paul. Now, you got a couple of things going on there. So when we look at the Gentile conversion plate, Peter was the first one to go into the Gentile. And he went to Cornelius' house, you understand? That's where he went. And he preached the gospel to them. And the Holy Spirit fell upon them without water baptism. They were all in one room in one accord with his, and the people were with him. And as he yet speak, the Holy Spirit fall upon them. And the people that were with him, with the apostle Peter, say, can't, they, they looked at Peter and said they knew they had to be water baptized and said, can't any man forbid water? So Peter forgot. And the Holy Spirit did what it's supposed to, brought it back to his remembrance, just like he did Moses back there when he went into Mount Sinai, you see, back there. And you got the first chapter of Genesis. And then... Moses left some things out, and you got the second chapter of Genesis, so they think there's two accounts of the creation, but he brought some things back to Moses' remembrance. You understand? Same thing he did with Peter. Then Peter said, then said, I remember what Yahshua said. John said, uh, he truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not, not many days hence. And, see, and then he goes on, 11th chapter, talking about the Jews trying to put a burden on them, talking about the cardinal ordinances that they had 1,500 years to try to keep, trying to put that on the Gentiles and thinking that the Gentiles could keep that also. So we're dealing with the Apostle Paul, and we're trying to talk about what's happening with the Apostle Paul. Now, he just read that part again where he's going to be an apostle, okay, to the Gentiles. 17th verse of Acts, the 26th chapter. Delivering them from the people and from the Gentiles, mm -hmm. unto whom now I send thee. Now he's going to send him to the Gentiles. Now, now that's that's why we talk about Paul. Sometimes they say he had three trips, or sometimes they say four trips. You know, four journeys. You see, and that's on your Daniel's chart where it starts showing those those trips of the Apostle Paul, because he journeyed more than they all. He spoke more languages than they all. So he's speaking the tongues. So we talk about speaking in tongues, and he spoke all those languages. 
You understand? But read on, God. 18 verse, to open their eyes. To open their eyes. And to turn them from darkness to light. Turn them from darkness to and light. And from the power of Satan unto and, Yahweh. Well, the power of Satan. Well, what power, what is Satan preaching right now? Well, we got a play called apostasy there. And in the court roundabout, it says cardinal ordinances restored. Now, don't know what using those terms don't nobody know what a daggum cardinal ordinance was before they don't talk about cardinal ordinances in the baptist or the church see fleshly ordinance he put a chart up there and he listed some of the cardinal ordinance six of them that they were physical fleshly ordinance of physical works of righteousness that the, he had given to jews as a type and shadow to serve yahweh elohim you understand and then he now, Paul's not there to have the Gentiles adopt that. Peter wasn't there to have the, the Gentiles at Cornelius' house to adopt the cardinal ordinances because they couldn't do them. How are we going to do them? We didn't even know what, what they were. And somebody, like Satan, brought it to these ministers, these sects, these creeds, these cults, these vain philosophers, and, and put that on us and these false scientists, you know, as if it was a good idea to continue that. And none of us knew anything about it. We thought that was the right thing to do because it was coming out of the Bible. Well, go ahead. That they may receive forgiveness of sins mm -hmm. and inheritance among them, which was sanctified by faith. Now you're supposed to be sanctified by faith that is in, in Yahweh me. in Yahshua. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Now he's talking to Agrippa and he's supposed to know, I don't know, can you get, jump down that where they're going to send him to Rome? Are you still in the 26th chapter or are you reading 48? Yeah, 28th chapter. Okay. 26th chapter, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 26 and 29. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, I went to Yahweh that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, mm -hmm. except these bonds. Yeah, if you should be like him, believing on Yahshua the Messiah, whom has said in the vision and revelation that he had received by faith, you see, except for they got him all handcuffed or bound by all the chain or however they had it. And when he bond. had thus spoken, mm -hmm. the king rose up and the governor now you got king governor and priest you understand and Go they ahead. that sat with them and when they were gone aside they talked between themselves saying mm -hmm. this man doth nothing worthy of death or of bonds mm -hmm. then said a group to festus mm -hmm. this man might have been set at liberty mm -hmm. if he had not appealed unto Caesar. So they would have let him go if he had not appealed to Caesar. But because he appealed to Caesar, you understand? See, go ahead. Uh, that's 27 and 1. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners Unto one named Julius. Oh, that's good. Because we're going to go Augustus back to the uh, 28th chapter. 28 now, chapter you have to consider something here. Now, Paul, because he appealed to Caesar and he's a Roman citizen, he's going to Rome. You get the point? Now, when you look at your Daniel's chart, as we say, the proven existence and destruction of Satan and his angels through the dispensation and ages. You understand? Now, Peter has to go to the head, which is typical of Babylon. Paul is going to the feet. That's said at the Vatican or Rome, which Paul's going because he's a citizen in the 18th chapter. I don't know if it's 18th chapter. Maybe you ought to go back to the 18th chapter. Acts, the 18th chapter. Uh, Acts, the 18th chapter. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth mm -hmm. and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born of Pontius, lately come to Italy, 
with his wife Priscilla. Mm -hmm. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews. Now we're talking about Caesar at that time. Claudius commanded all the Jews to what? To depart from Rome. So now he's putting all the so-called, now folks like to say they were Christians. They weren't. <laughs> but the idea, that's the way they use the term. They say he put them all out. Now, Peter was a Jew of Israel where he couldn't go to Rome. You get the point? See? But they're claiming that the Roman Catholic Church are claiming that they are Peter's and that Peter was in Rome and he was buried somewhere under the Vatican. You understand? So even the Catholics, you understand, and this apostate play got the whole thing mixed up and they know it was Apostle Paul that went to Rome because he was a citizen because he appealed to uh, Caesar. You understand? And Yahshua told him he had people in Rome. You understand? And we talk about, we're going to get to, well, let's just go to uh, back to 28th chapter. Where we're talking Acts about. 28th chapter and the third verse. Mm -hmm. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of six and laid them on the fire, there came out a viper mm -hmm. out of the heat mm -hmm. and fastened on his hand. Mm -hmm. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer. Now that's what they saw looking at him because here comes a serpent out of there and he didn't survive whatever thing didn't happen. And now you got a serpent hanging on his hand. Now Paul don't even, you know, get all excited and jump and scream and run. He has escaped the sea. Yet Somebody did run vengeance. from a serpent back there in the law, right? <laughs> yet vengeance suffereth not to live. Yeah. And he shook off the beast now into shook the it, fire. Shook him back into the fire, and right? And felt no harm. And didn't feel no harm. Albeit they looked when they... Wait now, nah, so here's Paul. He done, turk up, he done took up a serpent. And it did not harm him. We kind of read something about that. You understand? But that's not necessarily the type of certain serpent that we're talking about in this school. See? It's not the type of serpent that they say folks in the hills of West, uh, West Virginia would pick up and throw them down in the congregation. And some of them was getting snake bites and some of them would die. You get the point? So you can read some things out the Bible, but get the wrong interpretation about what it means so in this school we're trying to get it we're trying to grow any knowledge and understanding and wisdom and knowledge through the holy spirit see in our time so this is not like any place else it's not like the churches on the corner are all those different sex creed cults and vain philosophies you understand? Go ahead, Doc. Acts 28 and 5. And mm -hmm. he shook off the beast into the fire mm -hmm. and felt no harm. Mm -hmm. How be it they looked when he should have swollen? Now they looked for him to swell up, right? Turn black and blue or purple or whatever and falling down. Dance and going suddenly. To, and going convulsions and all of that. But after they had looked a great while mm -hmm. and saw no harm come to him, mm -hmm. they changed their minds and mm -hmm. said that he was a god. So can't nobody do that. He should be dead. Go ahead. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, mm -hmm. who re received us and lodged us three days courteously. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that the following. Oh, Publius so we got something like a death bear in the third day resurrection? Maybe. And now, that's what we go through with this school and look for. We have all these events. We're looking at a pattern. We're looking for certain principles. Maybe a death, maybe a burial, maybe a resurrection, maybe a 40, maybe a ascension. And that's what we're looking for by this pattern. This pattern operates of, as the priest function in there. He goes up to the most holy place. He takes the blood there and he has to come back down. See, that's the operation by the pattern or at least the sododial duties of the priest in that structure. You understand? Go ahead. And it came to pass that the father populace lay sick of a fever mm -hmm. and of a bloody flux. Mm. To whom Paul, well, we got some blood, a word blood in there. We got some. They thought he should die. We run into some blood. So there are some principles that we talk about that's operating that we can see in these events that are witnesses as John said, three that bear reckoned in heaven, 
Father, Word, Holy Spirit, most holy place, holy place, court round about. There are three that bear witness in the earth. You see coming down the spirit, water, and blood going up the blood, water, spirit. Third day resurrection and 40 and ascension. See, go ahead, Doc. Whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him now and Paul, healed him. Now, what he said, they shall pick up serpents and it wouldn't harm them. And they were going to heal folks. So Paul laid his hands on them and healed them. So he also has the Holy Spirit. At that time, he has the power to heal. That's what Yahshua's Messiah did when he walked through the Judean hill. He said he healed everybody. And then folks want to ask him a sign. He said an evil and adulterous generation seek me after a sign. And ain't no sign going to be given but the prophet Jonah. You understand? You see? But go ahead, Doc. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Yeah, well, there was a situation. Well, see, now everybody, just like Yahshua the Messiah, or that was Yahshua in him, or the Holy Spirit in him, and he was going to the Gentiles, they said, oh, this dude could heal people. Now everybody was dragging the sick and, and the lame and everything to him so they could be healed. Even to the point in one place in there, they just want to touch the hem of this garment or get a handkerchief or anything from Paul so they could be healed. You understand? Now, same, now we find out similar things when we talk about the founder and deans that he was over healing services. You understand? Five minutes. Five minutes. All right. Go ahead, Doc. Healing services. Yeah, he was over healing services, you understand? He healed all people. And then he said, he first he let the doctor check you out, talking about the founder. But Paul didn't bother with that. But go ahead, Doc. 10th verse. Who also honored us with many honors. Mm -hmm. And when we departed, they laid at us with such things as were necessary. Mm -hmm. And after three months, oh, we now departed we got three in months, a huh? ship. Somebody hid somebody for three months. I guess that was back there after... Oh. Moses' mother hid him for three months when she could no longer hide him. I guess the ship floats on water. I don't think they had airplanes back there. Of Alexandria, mm -hmm. which had wintered in the Isle, mm -hmm. whose sign was Castor and Pollux, mm -hmm. and landing in Well, we don't Syracuse. need to go through all those journeys. We carried now. there three Let's get days. down to the last, last part of that chapter. Okay. That's so here he is on his journey, he's going to Rome, where the Vatican City, or the Vatican's going to be built, and they said it was built upon the bones of Peter. So back there in Matthew, when Yahshua was talking about, talking about upon this rock, and called Peter a stone or a pebble, you see, I would build my church or assembly. Now, even on this Daniel's chart here, you understand, we're talking about a rock. You understand? I think that's like a uh, Daniel's 2 and 45. Keep what you got, Doc. Daniel 2 45. Mm -hmm. Where, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain. Now you got a stone that's cut out the mountain. We're talking about Yahshua going to build the stone. Now, what, go ahead, read on. Without hands. Without hands. And that Wait a minute. Now, when we talk about worshiping Yahweh without hands, you understand? And when we talk about cardinal ordinances, you understand those six on there, you understand? Now, you have to do all those things, you know, understand me. You know that he was given physical Israel. Well, if you had to circumcise somebody, would that be with hand? If you're keeping those ceremonies, would that be with hand? If you're baptizing somebody, would that be with hand? If you're eating the Passover, would that be with hand? If you're offering sacrifice, would that be with hands? You understand? In this spiritual age, we do we do all those things in the Ten Commandment law and all those things pertaining to it, the rest of the laws, they have to do with hands. Now, in this age, present kingdom age, where the New Testament, we have to worship him in spirit and truth and all those, because he'll talk about circumcisions without hands. We do all these things without hands. Go ahead, Doc. Back to Acts 28, 27. Now, we're talking about that stone, said Peter was the rock and the Vatican was 
built upon Peter and those bones were under the Vatican. But Peter was never in Rome. Mark Luke, I guess it's uh, Mark John, took him to Babylon. You understand? Paul went to Rome. See? So maybe they should have built it upon Paul, but but Yahshua was talking about himself being the rock. So we're talking about this rock in the book of Daniel. What did it say, Doc? Yes, that made without hand. Mm -hmm. Out of this mountain? Yeah. Taken out without hands? Yes. Okay. Because we probably pretty much got like a couple true more suckers. It's Daniel 2 and 45. Daniel 245, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, mm -hmm. and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. Now we're talking about that kingdom, you see, or satanic kingdoms through the dispensation of ages. It broke, it broke, go ahead. The great Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, hath made known to the king what mm -hmm. shall come to pass hereafter. Mm -hmm. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof. So he's showing now that foot went all the way down to pagan Rome, where Paul was at. So Paul was in Rome, but Peter was not in Rome. That rock that was cut out, now it's out of a mountain now. You understand? Back there, just like Yahweh Elohim, Moses went up into the top of that mountain. They saw Yahweh Elohim in the mountain. He talked about the creation of the heavens and the earth and showed Moses the genealogy of mankind all the way down to Yahshua of Messiah, all the way down to Pentecost. That's kind of what we're looking at. Well, I'm going to stop there. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Dodd. That concludes class for today. The These classes operate by free will donations. Anybody designed to make a donation, please see the treasurer, Dr. Todd Renshaw. Doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude and goes as follows. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with the exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and all time. Let us all say, hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.